I don't know what is that sickness or disease that you have in your physical body. But I know one thing that the Lord Jesus Christ wants to heal you. It is God's will for you to be healed. It is not God's will for you to live in pain and have that sickness in your physical body. In fact, Jesus Christ carried all of our sicknesses upon him. And he died for us on the cross of Calvary. So that you and I will lead a life that is free of sickness. From that sickness or disease that is in your body. How much ever long time that it has been in your body. It does not belong there. Because Jesus Christ took it upon him. So that you will live a life of good health. Somebody shout an amen. Say with me. It is God's will for me to be healed. When Jesus Christ was walking in the face of this earth, he healed everyone that came to him. Not once did Jesus refuse to heal anybody. Every time a sick man or sick woman or anybody that was sick was brought to him, Jesus Christ immediately healed them. He healed every one of them. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 19 we see, For power went out from him and healed them all. All everybody say with me healed them all not one person was exempt he healed them all Matthew 8 16 again says and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick one more time say it with me he healed all who were sick everybody was healed and not just that he healed them from every kind of sickness and disease. He healed everyone. And he healed every kind of sicknesses and disease. Jesus never looked at one particular sickness and oh, this uh, is difficult for me. No. Whatever sickness it is. But the medical science never had medicine for that. But Jesus had. He had healing for every kind of sickness. Matthew 4 23 says. And healing all kinds of sickness. Everybody say all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. I don't know what is that sickness or disease in your body. Maybe the doctors have said you got to live with this all your life. Or maybe they have said there is no medicine for the disease that you have right now. That autoimmune disease. Whatever it is, whatever condition that is. Or maybe you're terminally ill even as you're watching me. But I want you to know Jesus Christ is healing and he healed and he's still healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Oh, and this Jesus who healed everyone and healed every kind of disease and sickness has not changed. Because the Bible is telling Jesus Christ is the same Yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it in the Bible times, and he's still doing it even now. And I want you to understand, it is God's will for you to be healed. Now that being said, I want to shift your attention to this man called Naaman. Who lived in the Bible times. This is a real man, this is not a story. This is a real individual who had a real sickness, but a terrible one in his body. This Naaman was a great man, a very affluent man, an influential man, a man of great valor. That's what the Bible is talking about him. He was an army commander in chief for the Syrian army. Meaning he was the top man in the country next to the king. He had the power, he had money, he had wealth, he had influence, he had name, he had fame. But he also had a problem. And you know what it is? He had leprosy in his body. This was a terrible sickness. Back in those days and even now, leprosy is very terrible. But back in those days, people with leprosy were considered untouchable. Now, this man had an abominable sickness upon him. That people would run away from him. Though he was an influential man. So there was this slave girl that was... A maid girl that was working for his wife. She noticed the king's leprosy. And what I understand is. This man's leprosy was very obvious for everybody to see. 
maybe it was not in a place where he could cover it with his clothes i have seen sometimes people will come to me with some sort of a skin condition that they will try to cover their hands with full sleeve they will try to cover all the way here and they are trying to cover it up so that people will not see or notice that sickness they are trying to save some embarrassment but you know what my friend jesus christ wants to heal you right now you don't have to live in shame anymore and naaman's leprosy was noticeable that the maid girl noticed it and she said ma'am if only sir will go to the prophet who is in samaria i know for a fact and i know for sure that he will be healed she was talking about prophet elisha and naaman hears about it so he goes to his king the king of syria and he tells there is healing awaiting me in israel the king was very happy to write a letter send a recommendation letter he printed a letter and on his own letter pad and he sends naaman over to israel so naaman packs some gifts i mean a lots of gifts and then he takes the king's letter and then he comes to the king of israel now watch this the girl wanted him to go to the prophet in israel but naaman i don't know what happened or what kind of miscommunication that was the king addressed the letter to the king of israel so naaman comes to the king of israel and the king of israel reads the letter and he was shocked he was terrified because he thought the king of syria is bullying him what can i do am i god to kill and make people alive why is the king trying to quarrel with me the king of israel he tore his clothes he thought the king of syria is bullying him now he was so troubled and the matter comes to the prophet and the prophet sends message asking naaman to come to him because you gone to the wrong place you know sometimes people they go to the wrong people in the wrong place looking for a solution but there is solution in jesus you got to make your way to the right place and today you are in the right place you are in the right channel watching me because god is about to do something powerful in your life hallelujah so now naaman with all his gifts and with this letter he comes to the prophet now you see this letter is from the king's letter pad it has so much a weight it is signed by a king it has so much a power because this is a very high recommendation it's a very heavy recommendation so naaman was his head was heavy his shoulder was heavy full of pride well if i go to the prophet the prophet has to respond because i'm coming with a king's recommendation letter so he comes to the prophet not just with a letter he also had lots and lots of gifts everybody say lots of gifts as we read in the scripture he brought some 6000 shekels of gold you know sometimes some of those biblical terminologies and those measures uh, that they used in those days it doesn't make sense right now but to put it in perspective shekel was actually it was it simply meant weight but how much weight is one shekel one shekel was 11.4 grams approximately so if you try to measure how much was 6000 shekels of gold 6000 into 11.4 grams would make it some roughly 68.4 kilograms now it's not some 68 kilograms of some sawed dust this is 68 kilograms of gold what 68 kilos of gold i was trying to do the math and try to find how much it's worth right now is worth at least 4.1 million us dollars by indian value it is some 33 crores indian rupees that's a lot of money and not just gold he brought some 
10 talents of silver. One talent is 3,000 shekels, meaning one talent is some 34.2 kilograms. So 10 talents would make it some 340 kilograms of silver. And not just that, he also brought some 10 changes of clothes. Not some ordinary clothes that's, you know, picked from a, 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 a supermarket or this is, this is him bringing gifts for his healing. Some designer wear clothes. I have not calculated the price for the designer wear that clothes that he brought. Let alone the silver and the clothes. The gold alone was worth in millions. Now here comes a man with a king's recommendation letter and some off a tree that's worth some millions of dollars coming and standing in front of the prophet's house. Obviously, this man expected some nice, wonderful response from the prophet. He thought he deserves a personal audience. But the prophet was not impressed. You see, you cannot purchase anointing. Mm -hmm. You cannot buy anointing. The real anointed will walk with dignity. People that carry genuine anointing, they cannot be purchased with money. So the prophet Elisha is sitting inside his house. There is a man with such a huge offer tree. It could help him build a lot of buildings, do a lot of television programs. I'm just saying back in those days there was no television, but I'm saying he could have used it for a lot of things in the ministry. But here's the prophet sitting inside and he's sending a messenger saying, ask him to go and dip himself seven times in River Jordan. Now this is not the response that Naaman expected. He thought he will be welcomed with a red carpet with all this offertory and you know, for the kind of influence that he had. But here is a prophet who is meeting royalty every single day. He's a man who is standing in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. And Elisha is sending a messenger asking Naaman to go and dip himself seven times in River Jordan. And Naaman felt so insulted. He was furious. He was angry and he was upset. What? Did I come all the way for you to ask me to go and bathe myself in a river here? Do you think there are not better rivers in my land? He was angry and he returned with rage. Makes sense. But then, he had one of his servants who came up with the same advice. The servant looked at the master and he said, Sir, what if the prophet asked you to do something really big? Won't you have done that? You would have done it for your healing. And he has after all asked you to dip yourself in River Jordan. He didn't even ask you money for that. He didn't charge you anything. Why not try it? Because if it goes, it goes. If it doesn't go, you already have it. So why not give it a try? Now this made some sense to name. And always surround yourself with people that can give you sane advice. Not people that will that will push you further into um, um, insaneness. So Naaman took the advice and he goes to the river Jordan and he is dipping himself. He started dipping himself. He goes into the water the first time and he's coming out so excited. <laughs> Has something happened? Nothing happened. And then he dips himself the second time. He's coming out of the water and literally, everybody say, literally nothing happened. Oh, and then he does it the third time, the fourth time. He's repeating it for the fifth time. Nothing happened. Everybody say, literally nothing happened. You can look at the face of anxiety that was in the face of that servant who suggested to follow the prophet's advice. Now he's dipping himself the sixth time. Nothing happened. Sometimes 
You expect God to work in installments. But it didn't work like that for Naaman. And he goes inside. Six times nothing happened. Probably he could have got upset and walked away. That's what a lot of people do. They, they are just one step closer to their miracle and they just walk away. They are frustrated. Well, nothing has happened. Why should I keep doing this thing? Well, this fasting is not working. Well, this thing is not working. I give up. But thank God for Naaman. He did not give up. Everybody shout with me. I'm not going to give up. But the seventh time as he dipped himself and he came out of the water, he came out a healed man. That leprosy was absolutely gone. And the Bible is telling his skin, his flesh was like that of a little child. His skin was new. His flesh was new. And he could not believe himself. You see, the healing was not in the water. Because if the healing was in the water, he should have gotten better every time he dipped himself. It's like taking an antibiotic. The doctor gives you an antibiotic. It's a course for five days. You know, with the first, second and the third day, you're already feeling better and you feel healed already. Because the medicine is working in your body. So if the healing was in the waters, he should have been getting better every single time he came out of the water. But actually, nothing happened until the seventh time. Six times he goes into the water and he comes out. Nothing happened. It simply implies that the healing was not actually in the water. But the seventh time, all of a sudden, something miraculous happens and this man is healed. So, we understand the healing was not in the water because if it was in the water, he should have been gradually healed. But the healing was in the prophetic instruction. The healing was in the obedience. You see, Naaman needed more than a physical healing. A lot of times people think, all I need is a healing from this sickness. God, all I need is for you to do a financial miracle for me. But friend, you know what? God is more concerned about something deeper that is a root cause for all of your problems. God, do a financial miracle for me, Lord. But you know what? Right now, God is not just trying to address the financial problem. Because what if that financial problem was a result of your disobedience or a result of your arrogance of you not seeking the will of God? You made your own decisions. You started that business on your own. You never asked God. You made your own decisions without even God guiding you that way. And now you have ended up in this financial problem. But now if God is going to clear that financial problem without even addressing your heart condition one day or the other or maybe the next month or the next year or five years down the line you will end up in the same problem coming back to God asking for a similar solution again so what God is trying to address is not your immediate problem but maybe the root cause of the problem Naaman thought his problem was leprosy. But God was more concerned about something that was deeper. What if the problem on the outside was, is a manifestation of the problem on the inside? Naaman thought, sir, my problem is my skin condition. But excuse me. Your problem is not just your skin condition. It's also your heart condition. And God is more concerned and he's more interested in our heart condition than our skin condition. I'm not telling he's going to let you live with that skin condition or with that sickness or that problem. But what I'm trying to tell you is before he deals with your skin condition, He's trying to address your heart condition. 
Naaman, when he came to the prophet, he was a man full of pride. His head was puffed up. Do you know who I am? I am the commander in chief. I am the second in command in my kingdom. I got brought all these gifts that's worth millions of dollars, meaning I'm a wealthy man. I can summon anybody with my money. He had a huge ego. And the prophet said, go and dip yourself. Who are you to give me an instruction? Because I am used to passing instructions, not taking instructions. You're giving me instructions. You thought there are no better rivers in my country. His ego wasn't happy. So what was happening was, the prophet said, you want to be healed? Dip yourselves seven times. Now you can imagine Naaman coming to River Jordan. He was already humiliated and insulted right in front of his own servants. Because in his country, back in his country, this man is so respected. When he comes, people stand up. But here he comes. The prophet did not move his little finger. He was humiliated and insulted already at the prophet's house. And now he comes to River Jordan. And here is all of his gifts. Those millions of dollars worth of gold. And then some 340 kilograms of silver. And all those designer wares rejected by the prophet waiting there. And he's dipping himself in the river. You know what happened? The first time he dipped himself in the water, that pride was beaten down. And the second time he dipped himself, that big ego was now deflated. And the third time he dipped himself, that arrogance was chiseled and beaten and broken. And likewise, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, God was dealing with that rough flesh in him, whatever needs to be broken and be submitted before God. It was all now broken, beaten down. Friend, the seventh time he dipped himself inside the water. He was a humbled man. And as he came out of the water, his heart was cleansed of all impurities. It was cleansed of all impurities. And as he came out of the waters, his skin was also cleansed of all impurities. Now his heart became new and his flesh became new as well. And the Bible is telling his flesh became as that of a little child. Very simple. When his heart became as that of a little child, his skin and flesh became as that of a little child as well. So the problem was not in the flesh and in the skin. The problem was deep inside the heart. Don't let your heart condition stop you from receiving your miracle. A lot of times what is looking big in your eyes says, God, I somehow want you to sort this problem out for me. God, I somehow, I want you to heal this disease, Lord. But friend, there are other problems. That physical problem is a manifestation of the spiritual problem on the inside. Don't you want to deal with that? God is telling, I want to deal with that before I deal with this. Because healing your leprosy is this easy. Healing that cancer is this easy for God. It's very easy. Nothing is too hard for God. God created man in one day. But for the same man, for God to change him, it takes years. 
For Moses, God had to put him for 40 years in the wilderness before changing Moses' heart. It, it took just one day for God to create man. But you know for yourself how many years he's been working in your heart, working in your life to change you. That because of the hardness of heart. Healing cancer, healing that sickness, healing your diabetes, whatever the sickness or condition that you have in your body, it is not too hard for the Lord. Everybody say, it is not too hard for the Lord. But are you willing to cooperate with the Lord in having a change of heart? What is that thing that is stopping you from receiving that miracle from the Lord? Is there unforgiveness in you? When you come before God, God, I know I have made the mistake, Lord, but please, can you bring me out of this financial predicament? You're asking for forgiveness. You are, you are seeking God's grace and mercies upon your life. But, 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 but in, deep in your heart, you want God to punish the other person that hurt you. For yourself, you want forgiveness, but for your neighbor, you want punishment. Is there unforgiveness in you? Unforgiveness can sometimes stop you from your breakthroughs, my friend. Why don't you forgive that neighbor? Why don't you forgive that colleague? Or why don't you forgive your brother, your sister, your mother, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, somebody that hurt you? Maybe you were wrong. Maybe actually they are wrong and you're right. But still, we forgive because they were wrong. If you were wrong, you're not going to forgive them. God wants you to forgive them because they were wrong. Or is there pride in you? Pride is such a subtle, subtle thing. One of the problems with pride is when you have pride, you wouldn't even know that you have pride in you. That's one of the problems with pride. So what God does is God uses problems and God uses situations and God uses people to expose the pride in you so that you will know, oh well, there is pride in me and you will address the pride. Imagine Naaman, he was insulted and now while all his precious gifts are waiting, he's dipping himself. God was dealing with his pride. But the seventh time he came out, he was a humble man. You see, the first time when he came to Elisha, the prophet did not even bother coming out of the house. He only sent the messenger. But after the healing, when Naaman came to the prophet, we see Naaman met the prophet. Meaning, the first time, the prophet intentionally did not meet Naaman. It was by purpose. He was trying to deal with his ego and the pride. Friend, what is the thing that needs to be broken today as you're getting ready for your miracle? Don't let pride get in the way. Don't let ego get in the way. Don't let arrogance get in the way. What needs to bend down before God? You see, dipping involves bending and bowing down. The prophet was telling, you have to bow down seven times. Go in, come out, go in, come out. He was bowing down in obedience to that instruction that he received. He was bowing down, forsaking his pride and ego. His flesh was broken and beaten down. Are you willing to bow down? Or are you, going, are you, are you still saying, no, I will be stiff-necked. I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to let my pride down. It needs to be broken, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. And it was happening right in front of the people that respected and revered him so much. 
There can be anything more humiliating than this. Are you with me? Another thing that can keep you from your miracle is a religious spirit or that old mindset. When the prophet said, you got to go and dip yourself in the water, Naaman was very upset and angry. He comes and he's telling his servants, what kind of a, what do you, what do you mean? I thought he will come out and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the disease and heal me. What? Who are you to give orders to the prophet? The verse is telling in 2 Kings 5.11 Indeed I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord as God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Friend, he is the prophet, not you. You don't give him instructions. If he is the one that is healing in the name of the Lord, he knows what procedure, what formula to follow, not what you expect. That's the problem with some people. They expect God to behave in a certain way. They expect God to come through in a particular way. God, I want you. Oh, I have seen how healings happen. They come out. And then they call upon the name of the Lord God. And then they touch the place or wave the hand over there. And then the healing happens. Now, this was his mindset. It was cemented in his mind, healings have to happen this way. Mm -hmm. When God decides to heal you, when God decides to do a miracle in, you, in your life, he chooses to do it in his own style and in his own way. Not in the same way that you expect him to address your problem or bring a miracle in your life. Jesus Christ, Sometimes he spoke and healed people. Sometimes he touched them. Sometimes they touched him. And one time he makes a paste out of the mud by spitting his saliva and he applied it on the eyes of the blind man and opened the blind eyes. He did it in his own style. Every time it was unique. God heals in his own ways but if you got a mindset that is telling how oh, this is the way I want God to do a miracle for me it's not going to work that way even for Moses once he asked him to talk then first he asked him to hit the rock and the next time he asked him to speak to the rock but when your mind is stuck in an old pattern you're not, it is stopping, it's not allowing God to move in a new way in your life. Friend, that miracle that God wants to do in your life has got its own pattern. He's not going to heal you the same way he healed your neighbor or your friend or your colleague. He's going to heal you in a unique way. Sometimes people feel a heat run through their body. Sometimes people, people feel a chillness run through their body. Sometimes people don't feel anything at all, but they are healed. Don't let your mindset stop you from receiving your miracle. That was the problem with the man at the pool of Bethesda. He was there for 38 years, sick, lying in the bed. Jesus Christ comes to him. And Jesus asked him, hey, do you want to be healed? And immediately he wanted to make Jesus Christ a porter. Because he was waiting for 38 years for somebody to push him into the water. Because an angel of God will come and stir up the pool. And if somebody, whoever jumps in the first place will get healed. So this man was fighting the crowd, trying to jump as the first person into the water when the water is stirred up. His mind was stuck in that. An angel would come and stir up and I have to jump as the first person into the water and I will be healed. And he was bedridden. Can't move. Now Jesus Christ comes to him 
and is asking him, do you want to be healed? Rise up, take your bed and walk. And he goes on to explain in detail, he's, he's talking to Jesus Christ about the 38 years of history. Jesus Christ did not come to you to take a history lesson. Mm-hmm. He doesn't need a history lesson. He knows you even before you were formed in the womb of your mother. This man was almost losing his miracle. But thank God for Jesus Christ. He was gracious. He said, rise up. Take your bed and walk. Get out of this place. I've got my own way of healing you. This time it is not an angel stirring up the water. This time it's me giving you a command. Get up, I want to see you walk. And this man received the miracle. And he was leaping in joy. He took the bed and he started walking. Is your mindset stopping you from receiving your miracle? God, I want you to move in such and such a way. Sometimes people are not able to receive the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because they're expecting God to move in such and such a way. The problem is the mindset. But today Jesus wants to heal you. But before that, is God trying to deal with your heart condition before he can heal your skin condition? Is God trying to Heal your attitude, change your attitude before he changes your physical condition. Are you willing to change my friend? Today, I don't know what sickness that you have in your body that's going to leave your body now. By the power of Jesus Christ. But I want you to surrender yourself before the Lord. Allowing the Holy Spirit. Do an introspection of your life. And allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Father God. In the name of Jesus. Whatever needs to change. Let it be changed oh God. The flesh that needs to be broken. Lord that arrogance. That pride. We don't want pride in us. Help us to be humble. We don't want our ego to stand in the way of that miracle of God. We want to move into new dimensions. We want to move into new heights. We want to go from glory to glory. But let not pride and arrogance stop us. We are open to you. We don't want to have a Pharisaic mindset. An old mindset. We don't want to be an old wineskin. That would stop the flow of the spirit of God. Or the move or the pour of the new wine into us. Help us to change. And everybody that needs a change today, Lord, even as they are surrendering, as they are confessing it before you, give them the grace of God. Thank you for your preparing them for miracles and glorious miracles are going to happen right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friend, remain in an attitude of prayer. I'm going to pray for healings and deliverances. Get ready for some insane miracles right now. But now is the time to give to the Lord. Giving is not at all compulsory. But you can see a lot of details on the screen. The Google Pay, Paytm, bank transfer details. Use whatever is comfortable for you. And sow a seed. If you are using Google Pay, try to use the QR code. Or if you want to use the number, you can use the number as well. If it is a business, if it is a uh, tithe do mention it as tithe if it is building fund do mention it as building fund and if you are doing a bank transfer take a screenshot or note down the transaction details and send an email or whatsapp or a text message so we will be able to acknowledge so right now is the time to give to the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm going to pray for healings and miracles and deliverances after that get ready for your own miracle don't go anywhere let's give to the Lord and remember, giving is not compulsory, but God loves a cheerful giver. I will be right back, and I'll be praying for you all. So don't go anywhere. From the miry clay, put me on the rock to say. Pick me up from the miry clay, put me on the rock to stay. My Jesus, pick me up from the miry clay. 
put me on the rock to stay Pick me up from the miry clay Put me on the rock to stay All my life was in the mist I thought there's no way Jesus. I want to thank each and every one of you that has sowed a seed, have sent in your tithes, offerings. The Lord Jesus Christ shall bless you and prosper you. Thank you very much for partnering with this vision that God has given us. You are part of this vision and you are a huge blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ prosper you and bless you. Amen. So are we ready for miracles right now? Jesus is right here right now and He wants to do a miracle in your life. That sickness, he wants to uproot it from your physical body and he wants to heal you. So, are we ready for miracles? And before I pray for your miracles and healings, we are going to listen to a testimony. Please come forward, brother, and let us know what Jesus Christ has done for you, please. Praise Lord, brother. Mm -hmm. My name is Lara Fraser. I have came to our church uh, three weeks back with a lymph node in my post cervical neck. Uh, I have went to a doctor's. They have said uh, that uh, lymph node swelling, it could be because of uh, any cancer or tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a very uh, intolerable pain. Uh, when I sleep, I couldn't able to sleep. My pillow used to uh, hurt uh, I, when it touched my neck. Even my shirt collar, when it's touched, I'll be having a lot of pain. Even when the collar touches the lymph node, it used to hurt you so much? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Uh, after that, uh, when I came to you, you have prayed me, you have touched and you have prayed me. 
after the prayer within a 3 weeks it got vanished its own self mm-hmm. and uh, after that i have went to the doctors and they uh, did it go away gradually or it just disappeared no it just disappeared it just disappeared yeah. mm-hmm. so then i went back to doctors they have checked me and they have said that uh, okay it is got vanished by its own self so you no need to go for any meditation the for doctor cancer. said it went by itself yeah. no jesus christ sent it away hallelujah amen yes go ahead Uh, then doctor said there is no you no need to go for any cancer meditations or any other test they asked me to just go for a vitamin supplements only that's you it. didn't need any further test because the lymph node was gone yeah. hallelujah come on put your hands together people watch this this precious brother had a lymph node right uh, in his neck which was hurting him so bad that the pain was so bad that and it used to have there used to be swelling and pain even the collar the neck uh, the shirt collar touching the lymph node would cause him so much of pain the doctors um, suspected it could be cancer or tuberculosis both of them are terrible diseases but the lord jesus christ has healed him absolutely it is jesus christ not jerson jesus christ healed him and caused the lymph node to disappear and he is just fine praise the lord put your hands together bless the name of jesus thank you very much brother god bless you hallelujah so Jesus is going to cause that pain to disappear from your physical body as well. Are we ready? I want you to watch one more testimony of what Jesus Christ has done in this precious sister's life. 30 years she was having an allergy that would cause bumps all over the face and the body, but one simple prayer and Jesus Christ has healed her. Do you want to watch the testimony? Let's watch it. Amen church. My name is Wendy and I'm 4 weeks old in this church. I came 4 weeks ago. This is my fifth time in here. I want to thank the Lord for the miracle that he did last week. See, my problem is I have allergies. Since I was a small kid, as long as I can remember, I think 3, 4, 5 years. That's when the allergies started. I could not eat fish. Like if people were coming passing through, they are selling fish. They open the ba- the basket. The smell would automatically affect me after 5 10 minutes my whole face will you mean, wait a minute yeah the smell will cause only allergy? the smell just by That's smelling terrible. fish smelling fish would cause allergy all over the face yes okay yes go ahead then uh, when i came here to dubai 2017 the list for allergies ended i was lactose intolerant everything that has to do with milk i couldn't eat so the list kept on piling and piling and piling but last week the lord showed this miracle for me last week we came late and uh, i came in behind the row then the pastor was asking if anybody need deliverance i didn't know i was going to come i was not planning on even coming in front but i found myself coming in front the pastor prayed for me well, what's your problem what allergy is it You can't eat pork. Fish. You can't eat fish. You can't eat drink eggs. milk. Eggs. You can't eat egg. Spices. You can't eat spices. So what do you eat? Chicken and only chicken and beef. The name of Jesus. Every spirit of allergy today I stand under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you leave this body. In Jesus name I command you. Get out of the body you devil. I release the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. From today she will eat pork, fish, eggs, drink milk. and be healthy i declare it over her in jesus christ mighty name amen i want you to do something what do you like the most the pork or the fish or how it tastes like you don't want to eat them what do you want to taste the first thing fish go ahead what fish do you want to buy mackerel you go buy macros wherever you shop from eat it and come back next friday
you are healed. Okay. Yesterday night I was coming from my office. So I decided, no, I can go and buy the fish for myself. I went and bought the mackerel. I made it. I even asked her and sent pictures every single time I was cooking. Is it done? Is it okay? And she said, it's okay. You can pray. You can eat. Then I prayed. Then I went to bed. When I woke up, because usually when the allergies start, 5, 10, 15 minutes, you can actually see the swelling of the face. But On yesterday I slept. Swell. Lips will swell. My uh, gums will swell. I will have lacerations. Uh, you know when you are burnt with tea or tea? All those lacerations, I can feel them in my mouth. So usually 20 minutes tops. My whole face, my nose, my eyes, everything will swell. So yesterday I went to bed. Today morning I woke up. Before I could open my eyes, I prayed, Lord, this is my time. This is my time. I opened my eyes. Nothing happened. She even checked it out. She's been having this allergy. She can't take fish, she can't take lactose and what else? I remember you came in. Eggs, pork, egg spices, pork, and and spices. Spices? Yes. And uh, the list goes on. The list and goes on and like, you know, if the Amalek, I don't know what was left uh, for her to actually consume. But Jesus has delivered her just one small day. And now she's able to eat fish and nothing has happened. The Lord has glorified His name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord somebody. We praise God for what God has done for you, Wendy. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What a glorious Jesus we serve. I asked her what you can't eat. She was, I can't eat fish. I can't eat um, anything. She was having lactose intolerance, meaning she can't eat dairy products. And she was not able to eat any other spices. I asked her what else can you eat? She had it when she was three or four years old. And 30 years of this, and she's telling, even smelling fish can cause that allergy. I asked her, what, what do you like to have? What fish do you like? She said, mackerel. I said, this week you're gonna cook that? Eat it and come back. She's part of our Dubai church. She comes back next week. Even the smell of the fish would cause an allergy now. She swallowed the fish and she didn't have any problem because Jesus Christ is healer. Come on somebody, put your hands and bless the name of Jesus Christ. So today this Jesus is right here and he's going to touch you and he's going to heal you. I want all of you, if you want to kneel down, you can kneel down. If you want to stand up, stand up. I want you to lift up your hands, but before that, open your eyes. I want to tell you something. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who heals you. I just and praise. Jesus Christ heals. So when the Lord Jesus Christ heals you, you can't keep it to yourself. Sometimes people receive a miracle and then they feel shy about things they don't want others to know. Come on. When you had the sickness, you didn't feel shy. Now Jesus Christ has healed you and you feel shy about it. Talk to others about the miracle and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And number two, Send your testimonies to us because your testimony can become someone else's testimony as well. So how do you send it to us? Well, if you are in Chennai or if you are in other cities where you can come over here, come here and share your testimony. And if not, you can take, if, you, if your mobile phone has a nice camera, if you have a nice video camera, you can record it and send them to us. Or you can type it out or write it in detail and email or WhatsApp it to us. But when you do that, don't forget to include the following six details. Number one, your name. Number two, a picture of yours. Number three, the name of the disease or the sickness that you had. And number four, how long you had it for. And number five, what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you right now. Maybe some of you felt the heat run through your body. Or some of you felt some stillness go through your body. Or some of you felt a wind blow through your body. Or some of you might not have felt anything at all, but it just went away. So, what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you right now. And number six, if you have a medical test report, blood test report, x-ray report, scan report, or a before and after picture of the tumor being there and not being there, I want you to include those details and send them to us because that will add to the authenticity of the testimony. Hallelujah. Hey man, I'm so excited for what Jesus Christ is about to do for you right now. Hallelujah. So call upon the name of Jesus. Lift up your voices. Call upon his name. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command every sickness and infirmity, every spirit of infirmity and sicknesses, take all of those infirmities and sicknesses, and now, this moment, as I command you, get out of their bodies. I command you, devil, get out now, and I release the healing power of Jesus Christ over your bodies. Oh, it's starting with your skin conditions today. God is healing skin conditions. Skin allergies are being healed. Vitiligo is being healed. Maybe medication did not solve that problem, but today Jesus is touching you. I command every skin disease, leave your skin now. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm some, seeing somebody. You've been going through a laser treatment. Oh, you're not in India. Been going through a laser treatment that is not sorting out that skin problem for you. But today, the Lord Jesus is touching you. There is a heat that is going through your body. Oh, Jesus. This is kind of a treatment that used to take it. There used to be heat now. This heat is going all through your body. You are being healed now. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every other skin problem, wherever you are, you are healed today. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is your name. Our healer, our deliverer, and our savior, and our Lord Jesus is your name. Jesus is your name. your houses wherever you are friend that is the presence of Jesus every kind of tumor put your fingers like this if you have a tumor or a cyst put your fingers like this that's the place where you have the tumor or cyst in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, you tumor and cyst, now dissolve. Go away. In Jesus' name, absorb the power of Jesus Christ. Problems with the nerves are being healed today. Neurological conditions. I'm seeing certain specific mysterious neurological conditions are being healed. You've been frequenting doctor regarding this problem, this neurological condition. Every time they find something, as they try to address it, the next time something else comes up. Oh friend, this is not a physical problem. This is a spiritual problem. Today, I command the devil, get out. It is a small boy. It's a small boy. I'm seeing a boy this big. Oh, God is touching your brain cells. God is healing you. Be healed by the power of Jesus. Oh, is that a tumor in the brain? It's going away in the name of Jesus. Lara Vital organs, whatever needs healing. Heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, be set right in Jesus' name. Heart blocks are being removed today. Today, heart blocks are being removed. Your heart has become weak. It's a dying. That's what the doctor told you, brother. 
you will live you will live and glorify the name of Jesus now in the name of Jesus today there is a wind that is coming over your life I'm seeing bone conditions being healed God is putting new bones for you every degenerated bone the life of Jesus is coming through this wind be be set right in the name of Jesus oh some of you you're, you're feeling a jerk that is happening in your in your skeletal system today God is putting new bones there new joints are being formed receive the life of Jesus mm-hmm you are hearing some crackling sound right there creative miracles are happening right now extra growths disappear now uteruses are being healed ovaries are being healed reproductive system is healed every spirit of childlessness devil that is stopping the childbirth now get out conception is happening next year by this time you shall have a baby Oh Jesus is your name Jesus is your name You're a miracle worker You're a miracle worker of the boxes he's saying all right all right all right all right whatever was not right the health parameters are becoming normal diabetes out blood sugar level come to normal in jesus name insulin levels become normal hallelujah glands be healed in jesus name glands are being healed thyroid is becoming normal swellings and extra growths disappear some creative miracles are happening right now new bones and muscles are being formed i speak to your physical system you're watching me from malaysia okay a loss you've been through a loss this is a financial loss nobody knows it nobody knows it because you never shared this with anybody especially you're scared of your mom you did something you invested the money you trusted a friend or something like that but now you are in a loss if you would surrender yourself before the lord if you will humble yourself before the lord a solution is coming a supernatural solution because right now only something supernatural can save you in the name of jesus You, 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 if you're wondering if that's about you you left a job to take up this thing and then this brought a loss for you father miracles in every area anybody that is going through financial loss lift up your hands in the name of jesus today let a visitation an angelic visitation shall happen financial miracles i prophesy over them they don't have a job i prophesy a job if they don't have and and if they're praying for their education lord miracles in jesus name your certificate is coming back to you you feel like you're a stranger in a foreign land but help is arriving today hallelujah thank you jesus anybody using hearing aids if you're using hearing aids jesus is going to heal you right now take off your hearing aid today i command those ears become normal use spirit of deafness get out of the ears in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name get out of those ears you spirit of deafness 
I release the creative miracle working power of Jesus over the years. Be healed in Jesus' name. Everything that's inside the ears, the cochlea, the tympanic membrane, whatever, the ear canal, whatever needs healing, now be healed in the name of Jesus. Spirit of blindness, get out of their eyes. Let the eyesight be restored. Take off your glasses, your eyesight is becoming normal now. By the power of Jesus Christ, be healed. Whatever your complication is, maybe I have not mentioned the name, but today every kind of sickness is being swept off your bodies by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a touch of Jesus Christ that is coming over you. Receive your healing. You're healed. You're healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stand up. Do something that you couldn't do before. Touch the place where you had the pain. The pain is gone. The tumor is gone. Check yourself. Put it in the comment section, but don't stop right there. I want you to send a detailed testimony. As I told you, come on, inspect yourself. Do something that you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. You're still watching me. Do something that you couldn't do before. You're healed. And send your testimonies to us. Keep it in detail. If you can come over here, come in person and share your testimony. Next week or one of them the following weeks. Or if you can, if you have a nice phone camera or a nice camera, video camera, record the testimony and send them to us. And if not, type it or write it down in detail and email or WhatsApp them to us. But include the following details that you see on the screen right now. And send them in detail to us. We want to know what Jesus Christ has done for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.